in getting to know your machine, you're going to want to learn how to put needles in. And if there's no needles in the cylinder, you just take an open needle and you pull it out and you place the needle in. Okay? If you want to put the neighbor's needles in, you just pull that out, push that down. Okay? Now then, the next thing we need to do, maybe or maybe not, is we need to oil the machine. Now, when you oil the machine, you don't want to have too much oil. And I have found that I just take my oil bottle and pull it out, and I just oil the butts. Okay? Just oil the butts. Once I do that, then I crank around and spread that oil around. And I sometimes if I oil that side, then I put the yarn carrier on this side and I oil this side. But you don't want to have too much oil. Okay, so now, in order to use the machine, we're going to thread it. We're going to set the setup bonnet down inside the cylinder and hang a loop on every other needle. Now then, it doesn't matter if you skip a needle. It doesn't have to be every other needle exactly. It might be every needle, okay? Just hang these loops. And what you want to avoid is a big hole on one side like that. And the other thing I want you to do is don't struggle to reach these needles or the ones that are down inside the cylinder. We're going to, this is a three stage process. So that's stage one. And once you get to where you can't reach these needles, we're going to bring the waste yarn up. Now you're going to set the waste yarn underneath the eyelet on the right hand side as you're looking at the machine. You bring it up through that eyelet. You're going to bring it around that post and that post. Then down under the leg of that V, down through here. And I use the blue pick to bring the yarn into the machine, like so. Just let that tail fall. Now you're going to hold down on the setup bonnet and crank forward. Now once I can see the remainder of the loops, then I'm going to finish hanging my loops. Now then, in general, it needs to be evenly spaced around the machine. I'm intentionally not hanging those loops so that I can show you what to do if it's not even. So I'm going to crank forward while holding down on the setup bonnet. Okay, now here I see I have one stitch on four needles. Over here I have one stitch on two needles. I have that in several places. Now, a stitch is going to try really hard to repair itself. And there are several ways that you can help it along. You can hang a bar up on here. Where it's two needles, you can remove one. Then, you crank around, and these stitches are starting to repair themselves. When you have one stitch on three needles, all you have to do is hold the middle bar up so here's another way to fix it when it's one stitch on two needles just raise the needle when it's one stitch on three needles 
hang a bar on the center needle. Hang a bar on the center needle. And then you crank by it. Get that one and that one. Once you crank by it, then you lower it down and you push it down, but not all the way down. If you push the needle all the way down, it'll close the latch. So whenever we say to push the needle down, you push it down, but not all the way down. You have to wait until the V-cam gets past. Now I'm cranking forward, but always while I crank forward, I have to hold down on the setup bonnet. In lieu of holding down on the setup bonnet all day, we have a buckle to install. Pause. To install the buckle, you just open it up and you put the setup bonnet in between the flat part and the arm. Now then, you have two ways. You can, if you do it like that, then it's going to hold and it's not going to slip and you can hang your weight. If you set it up improperly when you put the teeth against the knitting it's going to slide you don't want to do that so all you have to do is flip that baby over and you're ready to hang your weight generally I work with two weights hanging I do the stem weight and then another weight if I need more weight then I have the third one to add Sometimes I just work with one weight. It just depends on what yarn I'm using. Go. In order to change over to project yarn, I generally stop with my yarn carrier at the three o'clock position. I break my yarn and I take the waist yarn away. I pull this through right here at the half mark. Okay, then I place my project yarn underneath that eyelet and I bring it through, bring it around and around, under there, down through there. And I use my blue pick to feed it through. Now, if I feed it through right here, I'm going to drop this stitch. So, I want to feed it through to where this waist yarn is going to knit and the project is going, yarn is going to knit on those two needles. Then I will crank forward slowly to make sure that that happens. And I do have two stitches on these two needles. It's very important to choose a waist yarn and a project yarn that are two dramatically different colors. Now stop with the V cam right in front of you and I want you to look at this cam nut. This is what adjusts the tension. The length of the stitch is the bottom of this ridge to the top of the V-cam, okay? Right now, that's a pretty small stitch. If I turn the cam nut clockwise and make that dimension larger, let's look up here and see what it does to the stitch. Now this is a very loose tension compared to what that was set at. This would probably not be very comfortable to wear up against your foot. Now, and this is going to feel a lot better. So let's go ahead and adjust that cam nut. We're going to turn it clockwise or counterclockwise and we're going to screw it up and make that tension tighter again. Now I'm going to intentionally make it too tight. You see, look at that dimension. That is just a teensy tiny stitch. Okay, now I'm going to try to crank forward and see what happens. If you notice, you'll see the yarn is riding up on the cylinder. Now I can pull it down. 
but I am really having a hard time cranking and see it's all riding up. So that is, my tension is too tight. And it's very tempting to want to make your socks with a tight tension like this. But if you do, that's not comfortable for your foot either. So I'm going to make my stitch longer again. I'm going to try to recover from this really tight tension. Okay, my tension was so tight that I dropped these two stitches right here. And you know, when you're when you're dropping stitches like that, that should not happen. So that is telling your machine is telling you. See, these didn't even knit because it's still I'm just trying to recover from that real tight tension. And I want to get by this area. Right, get by that. Now, with my two weights on, and I'm cranking forward. Okay, I want to look right here. When I come around, you can see that that yarn is still not seating itself properly against the cylinder. So I'm going to loosen it one two turns, that would be two clockwise turns, and let's see what it does. And all that mess up in there that from where I got the stitch. Okay, now when I turn the, the crank, it is easy to turn, and you can see that that yarn is seating itself properly. The way I'll know when if my tension is correct or not is when I start to make a heel and if it's too tight then I'll loosen it one more click but I I think that this is a good tension for this sock